Good evening, saints of the living God. Amen. Amen. Good evening, everyone. You're going to throw something at me? Okay. I, I ain't scared. Very scared at all. We are in Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. And uh, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun. what was that? Did Daniel bring me this Hawaiian shirt? No. <laughs> this Hawaiian sh Daniel. Why would da who's Daniel? Daniel in the lion's den? Yeah. Rosemary. Hmm. No, this shirt, for those of you that are asking, welcome to those of you that are online tuning in. Now, this shirt was a gift to me from the mother-in-law of John Goff. John Goff. Uh, was baptized at his mother-in-law's and father-in-law's swimming pool on a Friday. And then the next day, we voted him into membership here. And she gave him a shirt like this, and she gave me a shirt like this. And uh, if you will remember, I actually preached in this shirt one Sabbath, because that was the Sabbath right after his baptism, the Sabbath that he was... Yeah. And I asked lots of people to wear Hawaiian shirts that day. That's absolutely all right. One of these days, we're going to have a polka dot Sabbath. There's nothing wrong with a polka dot Sabbath. I love polka dots. Welcome, saints of the living. You don't like polka dots? Well, Bob, if you don't own a polka dot shirt, you're going to have to go get yourself one. Um, being in touch with my feminine side, that would be Melanie. <laughs> she has polka dots, polka dot dresses, because I like polka dots. Yeah. Okay, let's pray, and we are going to recap in Revelation chapter 4. We're going to do our best to follow the notes. Um, I've got anybody need a chapter 4 set of notes? If you need a chapter 4 set of notes, they are right there. Brother Brad, can you grab one for uh, Sister Kelly behind you in the pink? Oh, she got one. Miss Patsy needs one. Do you have one, Miss Annette, number two? Oh, you don't use them? You've got it all up there, don't you? It's, a, it's an audiographic memory. One of these days, I'm going to have one of those. Um, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for Tuesday nights, for this hour that goes by so very fast. Um, thank you for blessing us with the fulfillment of your promise that where two or more are gathered together, you will be there. And Lord, some of us are not here tonight. I'm not talking about us in this room or a mental thing. I'm talking about some people that are dear and near to us aren't in this room tonight, and they typically are. And so we would like to lift up those individuals to you. We want to thank you for knowing exactly what's going on in their lives, and if they need healing, for healing them. If they need encouragement, for encouraging them. And if they need a friend, for being their friend right now. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you have given to us. We expect this evening that we will hear the voice of God speaking to us because we are opening the Bible. Thank you for blessing us in this way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, Revelation chapter 4. Now, I do not have a handout for chapter 5, but I am anticipating that we will get into some of chapter 5 tonight. And so we'll have to wait for that handout till next week. And you may be thinking, well, why didn't you have a handout? Well, I just forgot. That's why. Just what happened. No other way around it. 
Revelation chapter 4 and verse 1. After this I looked. After what? After John records the words of Jesus in the seven letters to the seven churches of Asia, the very last letter being the letter to the Laodicean church, and the la- one of the last things Jesus says is in Revelation 3 and verse 21. Revelation 3 and verse 21, Jesus says, To him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. So I have had a lady that has asked me for the last two weeks, not at this study, but on our Wednesday night study, how do we know that Jesus sat down? I don't see the verse that says Jesus sat down. And so it just right now occurred to me, Richie, that there's a verse where Jesus says, I sat down on the right hand, or I am set down with my Father in his throne. So Jesus, or the Bible says in Revelation chapter 4, after this I looked. After Jesus says that you will sit with me in my throne, even as I have sat with my Father in his throne, after this I looked, and behold, a door was opened where? A door was opened in heaven. In the context of what Jesus has just said in Revelation chapter 3 about you sitting on his throne with him, as he sat on the Father's throne with the Father, what do you anticipate this door opening into? The throne room. That's absolutely right. And so it says here in verse 1 of Revelation 4, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said, come up here and I will show you things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit and behold, a throne, a what? Well, your anticipation has been met. The context was, you will sit with me in my throne, even as I have sat down with my father in his throne. And then there's this door that is open. Our anticipation is that it is a door into the throne room of heaven. And John looks through that door and he sees a throne in heaven and one sat on the throne. Who is it that's seated on this throne? This is God the Father. We know this because in the context of Revelation 4 and Revelation 5, that Jesus does not show up until Revelation 5. Look at Revelation 5 and verse, we'll begin in verse 1. By the time we get to Revelation 5, we will have covered it so much, we might as well just read through it and hit chapter 6. But anyway... Revelation 5 verse 1 reads, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne. Who is that going to be? Who was seated in the throne in Revelation 4? That's the Father. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne. So we're still talking in the context. We're still talking about the Father. That sat on the throne, a book written within and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Verse 4. And I, John speaking, and I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. Verse 5, Revelation 5, verse 5. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Why was John weeping? 
Okay, there was no man found worthy to open the scrolls. That man was um, not, verse 3 says, he was not in heaven. He was not in earth. He was not under the earth. There was no man able to open those scrolls. Verse 5, and one of the elders said unto me, weep not. Revelation 5.5 5 is where we are. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of of David has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Verse 6, And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the middle of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain. Twenty-seven times the word lamb is used in the Revelation. 26 of the 27 times, it is a direct reference to Jesus Christ. The one time it is not a direct reference to Jesus Christ is in Revelation 13 when a lamb-like beast comes up out of the earth, meaning that that beast or that nation, that kingdom, will have the characteristics of the lamb. So it alludes 27 times to Jesus in the Revelation. So, when John looks through that door in Revelation chapter 4, he sees a being sitting on the throne. Then it says this in verse 3, and he of Revelation 4, we're back in Revelation 4, Revelation 4 verse 3, and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. On our notes, it says this about Revelation chapter 4 and verse 3, the bottom of page 1. The Father's appearance was like jasper, that's the color green. And sardius, that's the color red. Is the sign language of Revelation telling us that God's thoughts toward His people are thoughts of peace, the color green, because of the blood of Christ, the color red? You know the verse from the Old Testament book of Jeremiah where God says, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Where did green come in? Where did green come in? Jasper. Jasper is the color green. Well, that's right. You have green in your shirt, Richie, and, and I have some green in my shirt. Richie says he doesn't have green. The Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, the truth is established. Max, does he have green in his shirt? Yes, he does. Gene, does he have green in his shirt? Richie, deny it if you like, but you have green in your shirt. Yes, sir. In here where it talks, it says there's a rainbow like the emerald. Mm -hmm. How can a rainbow... So the question, how can a rainbow look like an emerald? Okay, so this is John's challenge. Are you ready for John's challenge? John's challenge is to express in human language what he sees in the heavenly realm. The only thing he can do is compare it to things that he can see. Now, you and I aren't seeing what he saw. When you and I think of rainbow, what do we think of? Yeah, we think of... Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, red, orange, yellow, blue, green, indigo, violet. That's what we think of. So John is using human language, which, is, which falls very short of expressing what he is seeing. But he's doing it to the best of his knowledge. So there's this rainbow. And at this point, it's green. God gives a rainbow in, right after the flood... And all of the colors are in it. Interesting that uh, there's a community that has tried to steal the logo of the rainbow 
But do you know what? You and I should display the rainbow very proudly and put something about God in that rainbow that we stick on the back of our cars, right? Uh, not trying to incite anything, just trying to claim it as it really is. So, top of page two, around the throne was a rainbow like an emerald, entirely green. I don't know. It's just what John saw. Representing God's everlasting covenant with His people. Go to Genesis chapter 9. Genesis chapter 9 and verse, beginning with verse 8. Genesis chapter 9 and verse 8. Genesis chapter 9 and verse 8. And God spoke unto Noah and to his sons with him, saying, Genesis 9 verse 9, And I, behold, God speaking, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, of every beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. Verse 11, And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the token. Um, this is the evidence. This is the reminder of the covenant which I make between you and me, and every between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. Verse 13. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token, a symbol, a reminder, a sign. It shall be a token of the covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth, and the bow shall be seen in the cloud, and I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow. Remember, we're talking about this bow because John sees a rainbow that is green over the throne of God. Verse 16. And the bow shall be in the cloud. And I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said to Noah, This is the token, the sign, the symbol, the reminder, the alarm, which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. So God puts this rainbow in the cloud to remind us as it is raining that the rain will not completely cover the earth this time or the next time. You and I get to see lots of beautiful rainbows here in Florida. What a blessing that we get to see those rainbows. John sees a rainbow that is a symbol of the peaceful thoughts that God has toward us. Let's go back to when we have another verse. Let's go to Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54, beginning in verse 8. <clears throat> Isaiah 54 and verse 8. Isaiah 54, 8 reads, Isaiah the 54th chapter, the 8th verse. It says, In a little wrath, I hid my face from you for a moment. But with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on you, says the Lord your Redeemer. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. 
For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so I have sworn that I would not be angry with you nor rebuke you. For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from you. Neither shall the covenant of my what? There's the peace, Richie. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed. In the context of this verse, he, God has just mentioned Noah, and now he talks about this covenant of peace. That's the covenant that God gave to Noah and his sons after the flood. So have I sworn that I would not be wroth with you. Verse 10 of Isaiah 54, the mountains will depart, the hills will be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from you. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, says the Lord that has mercy on you. So, <clears throat> first of all, when John looks into the throne room, he sees one seated on the throne who is surrounded by a symbol of peace. That means that heaven is not an angry place. And our God, God the Father, is not an angry God. So it is true that the thoughts that he thinks towards you are thoughts of peace. Well, why is he letting this happen in my life? A friend of mine calls it the shrapnel of sin. Amen. Shrapnel hits the good, it hits the bad, it hits the beautiful and the ugly. Shrapnel, the shrapnel of sin infects and affects every one of us. But when John looked into the throne, he didn't see the heartache of planet Earth. He saw that God was looking, or that, that God's throne was a place of peace and acceptance. It must have been very nice to see into the throne room of God. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 4. So you and I don't have that first-hand experience looking into the throne room of God, but we can certainly listen to the way that John describes it and in our minds go there with him, in our imaginations. Verse 2 of Revelation 4, immediately I was in the Spirit. So if we want to see what John saw, then you and I need to ask the Spirit of God to be in control of our lives. It says, immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and sardine stone, red and green. And there was a rainbow about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. How many seats are around the throne of God? 24. 24. Who's sitting on them? 24 elders. What are they clothed with? White raiment. <clears throat> what is white raiment a symbol of? the righteousness of Christ, which is pure, right? We can go with purity. It is a symbol, a biblical symbol for the righteousness of Jesus Christ. How do human beings get Christ's righteousness? Grace and faith. For by grace you have been saved through faith, right? So you and I exercise faith in Jesus and Jesus shares his righteousness with us. Here we have 24 elders inside the door of that throne room 
in 24 seats surrounding the throne of God. And what are they clothed with? Righteousness. White raiment. Now, what were Adam and Eve clothed with when they were created? <clears throat> and how did that righteousness that Adam and Eve were clothed with, the Bible says in Revela not Revelation, Genesis chapter 2, one of the last two verses, it says that Adam and Eve, it says, and they were naked and not ashamed. You get to chapter 3, it says, after they sin, they were naked and ashamed. I need to give you a little uh, uh, pause here, so I'm hitting the pause button. If you hear a nerve-rending screech come from that side of the church, uh, there's a baby goat in a stroller over there, and that baby goat lost its mama yesterday. And so Linda is bottle feeding that baby goat. And so it came in here in a stroller. So when, not necessarily if, when it screams, all of us are going to jump. Because they're not quiet when they scream. He's not hurting. He just needs milk. So... Um, and, and at this point, he doesn't smell like a goat. He just is a goat. So he's just one day old today. About, oh yeah, y'all just keep going. When it screams, you'll be like, ah! There won't be an O. Oh. But anyway, unpause. Let's go back. So John looks into the, if past this door, and he sees the throne of God. He sees the Father seated on the throne. And around the throne are 24 other seats and seated on those thrones are individuals that are clothed with white raiment. Adam and Eve, when they were created, they were created in the image of God. What does God wear for his garment? Light. Psalm 104, in the first four verses, it says that God is clothed with light as with a garment. So when Adam and Eve are created, Adam and Eve are wearing the light. Do you want to see that in Scripture? Do you want to see it? Yes. One says no, and five or six say yes. Let's just go there. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. In Genesis chapter 1. And verse 26. We, we, have, we have looked at this numerous times. Um, <clears throat> there may be some of us that haven't seen it or heard it yet, so we will do it again. Genesis 1 verse 26. Genesis 1 26 says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. So in whose image was man created? After whose likeness was man created? So today, I had the opportunity to use my new uh, handheld air gun sprayer. It's an automotive sprayer, and I was spraying something that was not automotive. I was spraying the base for one of Melanie's chicken coops. And um, <clears throat> the whole time I'm spraying this, I'm thinking about growing up at my dad's shop. My dad would take a piece of masking tape and he would divide a car from the trunk all the way to the hood. He would, he would divide it into two sections. One section would be my brother's side and the other section would be my side. And it was our job to sand that car until we could feel no bumps or no scratches or no dents with the palm of our hand. You couldn't use your fingers because your fingers are too sensitive. If you couldn't feel it with the palm of your hand, that meant that the paint would fill in whatever was there. So the whole time I'm spraying this, I am saying to myself, my daddy would be so proud because all I ever got to do was sand the cars. But now I'm painting and I didn't sand a thing on this before I started painting it because it's just a chicken coop and pst, pst, 
my little finger was going in and out just like dad's went in and out and the paint comes and it stops and it's just amazing. I sprayed it off, wiped it off with my hand. It's a chicken coop. When I repair the hood of your car from hail damage, I will wipe it off. I did do it right for a chicken coop, Miss Melba. Walk in my shoes before you critique my painting. So Adam and Eve are created. You've been in chicken coops what? Oh, ain't nothing, ain't much to know. They, they poo, and so you paint, so it doesn't eat through. That's what you need to know. So Adam and Eve are made like their dad. All I could think about today was being like my dad without all the preparatory work for the paint to stick. It did stick, by the way, and it looks very nice for a chicken coop. God said, let us make man in our image. Go to Psalm 104. Well, no, stay there. Did you lose Genesis? Go to Genesis 2, verse 25. We're going to catch these verses while we're in Genesis so we don't have to flip back. Genesis 2 and verse 25. It says in Genesis 2, 25, And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. Now look at Genesis 3 and verse 10. Adam says, Genesis 3, 10, And I heard the vo your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and hid myself. Now go over to verse 21. Verse 21, Genesis 3, 21. Adam and Eve, you will remember, every artist depicts it this way. Some palm branch or some nice flower is always in front of the particulars in those paintings. Adam and Eve, the Bible says that they took fig leaves and they sewed together these fig leaves. By the way, fig leaves have an iridescent hue to them. When the sun shines on the fig leaf, it sort of glistens. And so Adam and Eve, who are now naked, are trying to replicate the clothing that they once wore, which was a clothing of righteousness, which is what allowed them to not be ashamed. Then Adam and Eve try to make themselves look just as shiny as they did before, and the reality is all they did was make underwear. Because God comes along in verse 21, it says, And unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothed them. God is not into redundancy. If he had considered Adam and Eve to be clothed, he would not have clothed them. Adam and Eve, even though they had on their speedo and their bikini, Adam and Eve were still, in the eyes of God, naked. And so God clothes them. Only this time he clothes them with skin of a sacrificial animal. Of course, that is symbolic of the Messiah that is to come. Now go with me to our next verse, which is Psalm 104. Psalm 104, that's absolutely right. Psalm 104, we will begin reading in verse 1. Psalm 104 and verse 1 reads. Psalm 104, verse 1, Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God. You are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty. God is clothed with honor and majesty. When God creates humanity in his own image, he clothes them with what? On, watch this. Just stick with the verse. Honor and majesty. Remember that God said, and let them have dominion 
Who is it that gets to exercise dominion? Kings and queens. That's absolutely right. So here it says that God is clothed with honor and majesty. That must also mean that Adam and Eve were clothed with honor and majesty. Verse 2. Who covers yourself with light as with a garment. Who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. Who lays the beams of his chambers in the water. Who makes the clouds his chariot. Who walks upon the wings of the wind. Who makes his angels spirits, his ministers, a flaming fire. God is clothed with light. When Adam and Eve were created, they were clothed with a garment of light. Representing their righteous character. These 24 elders are wearing white raiment. That means that these 24 elders are righteous. That's absolutely right. Go back to Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4 and verse 4. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting. Anybody's uh, version say, I saw twenty-four thrones? Anybody? Yeah. I saw twenty-four thrones. So these twenty-four elders are seated on what? Thrones. They're clothed in white raiment. They had on their heads crowns of gold. I want to read to you something here. You can tell that I have bifocals, huh? Not trifocals yet. All right, I'll have to read that to you later. So, on the heads of these 24 elders are crowns. Who wears crowns? Kings. Kings. Verse 5. And out of the throne proceeds lightnings and thunderings and voices. Out of the throne proceeds lightnings and thunderings and voices. Go with me to lightnings, thunderings, and what? Voices. Go with me to Ezekiel chapter 1, Old Testament book of Ezekiel. Where's Ezekiel? Right before Daniel. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 1. Yep, Ezekiel 1 and verse 14. Okay, so we're going to need to read more than just 14. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 1. Ezekiel 1, verse 1. Now it came to pass, I'm going to read it quickly. Just follow along. If I get some of the words mingled up with other words, it's just because my brain is reading faster than my mouth can make it work. Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captains by the river Chebar, that the heavens were open and I saw visions of God. Verse 2, in the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiakim's captivity, the word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans, by the river Chebar, in the hand, and the hand of the Lord was there upon him. Verse 4, and I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud, and a fire enfolding itself. Now we have a fireman in here. Uh, Does fire fold in on itself? Does fire roll in on itself? Okay, okay, so she's probably seen that happen. And a brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof, as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. We'll see those in just a minute. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man, and every one had four faces, and every one had four wings. And their feet were straight feet. And the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. 
and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. Again, you and I are realizing the limitation of human language to describe a heavenly scene. And uh, all of the symbolism that Ezekiel is going to use here is going to be things that you and I know. Eagles, cow's feet, etc. Verse 7 continues. And they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. Verse 8. And they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides. So there's wings and then there's hands under their wings and they had and they four had their faces and their wings their wings were joined to one another verse 9 and they did not turn when they went they went every one straight forward as for the likeness of their faces they four had the face of a man the face of a lion on the right side, and they four had the face of an ox on the left side, and they four also had the face of an eagle. So why didn't they turn when they moved? Because they're always going forward. Because they had four faces. So they didn't turn. They had four faces. John is going to describe it in his language when we get to Revelation chapter 4. Verse 11. Thus were their faces. We are in Ezekiel 1 verse 11. Thus were their faces. And their wings were stretched upward. Two wings of every one were joined to another. And two covered their bodies. And they went every one straight forward. Whither the spirit was to go, they went. And they turned not when they went. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire and like the appearance of lamps, and it went up and down among the living creatures. And the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth, what? Lightning. Lightnings. And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of Lightning. Now, as I beheld the living creatures, behold, one wheel upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces. We will stop there. Go back to Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4 says, And out of the throne proceeded lightnings. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 14 said that what caused the lightnings was the one of the four living creatures, let me just read that again, Ezekiel 1 and verse 14, and as the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. I'm going to read our notes here. Under verse 5 on page 2 of our notes, John sees God's throne room as a place, page 2, under verse 5. John sees God's throne room as a place of busy activity. The lightnings represent the angels flying back and forth on God's errands. The thunderings and voices represent the voice of God. Go with me to John chapter 12. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. I'm keeping my finger in Revelation. John chapter 12. <clears throat> verse 28 John 12 and verse 28 Jesus has just responded to a, um, an inquiry by some Greeks that Philip brings to Jesus. And <clears throat> when Philip brings them to Jesus, not, not the case. These, gal these Greeks come to Philip and they say, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to Andrew. 
And then Andrew takes these Greeks to Jesus uh, and tells Jesus about them. And then in verse 23, Jesus begins to talk to them. You get down to verse 28. After Jesus talks to them, Jesus says, the beginning of verse 28, Father, glorify thy name. Verse 28 continues. Then came there, we're in John 12, 28. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and I will glorify it again. The people therefore that stood by and heard it said that it what? Thundered. Others said an angel spoke to him. And Jesus answered and said, This voice, which sounded like thunder, and whose voice was that? That was the voice of God. So in the Revelation, when John sees lightnings coming from the throne of God, that's the angels going from and then back to the throne of God, uh, probably traveling faster than the speed of light. But all John can use to describe that is things that John has seen himself. He's comparing it, right? Then in verse Revelation 4, verse 5. Revelation 4, verse 5 now. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings, angels going to and from, and thunderings and voices. That is the voice of God. Then it says, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the what? The seven spirits of God. What is this seven spirits of God? First of all, we want to uh, draw our attention that when John opens, when this door is open and John looks into this door, there's one seated on the throne, that's the Father, surrounded by 24 elders wearing crowns and righteousness or a symbol of righteousness. <clears throat> John says that before the throne in verse 5, Verse 5, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne. If you and I were in the Old Testament sanctuary, that would be describing the seven-branched candlestick that was on the south side of the earthly sanctuary. Across from the seven-branched candlestick in the earthly sanctuary was the table of showbread on the north side. You may recall from our study last week in Isaiah 14 that Lucifer, before he falls from heaven, says, I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Lucifer wanted to be on God's throne. So John sees into, past this door into the holy place where there is a seven branched candlestick or seven lamps of fire burning. Those seven lamps of fire are a symbol of whom? Okay, so Jesus ascends and will sit on the right hand of the Father. That's going to be on the north side of the heavenly sanctuary in the holy place. Across from that, John sees seven lamps of fire burning. What was the candlestick symbolic of in the earthly sanctuary? Let, let's even go further. What were the shape? What was the shape of where the oil was held in the seven-branched candlestick? It was shaped like an, if I'm not mistaken, it was shaped like an almond. Right? Okay. And so the oil that comes up into that seven-branched candlestick, that oil is a symbol of who? The Holy Spirit. I believe you have a reference here for that. We do. Let's go to Zechariah 4, Old Testament book of Zechariah. Okay, so where's Zechariah? Find Matthew. Find Matthew. Back up to Malachi. And right before Malachi, you have Zechariah. We're going to Zechariah, the fourth chapter. 
We will just begin in verse 1. <clears throat> Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 1. Zechariah 4 verse 1 reads like this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Find Matthew, back up two books. Zechariah 4 verse 1. And the angel that talked with me came again and walked with me as a man that has wakened me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep. And he said to me, What do you see? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick all of gold, with a bowl upon the top of it, and his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof, and two olive trees. So are they in the shape of almonds? I have to confirm that. And two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl and the other upon the left side thereof. So why are we reading this? Verse 2 said that there were seven lamps thereon. How many lamps did we have in Revelation chapter 4? Seven, all right. Verse 4, so I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel that talked with me answered unto me, saying, Don't you know what these are? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord of hosts. That seven-branched candlestick is a symbol of, of whom? The Holy Spirit. Why seven? Turn with me to Isaiah. Say again. It's God's number. Seven spirits. A symbol of completeness. There's seven churches. Uh, so each one had its candlestick. That's right. Um, <clears throat> turn with me to Isaiah 61. I believe it's Isaiah 61. Did somebody say it is? <laughs> it is. It is not 61. Isaiah what? Oh, Isaiah 11. Is that what I have in the notes? Okay, well, let's go to Isaiah 11. When all else fails, read the instructions. I've just proven to you that I am a man. All right, Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 1. When all else fails, read the instructions. Isaiah 11 verse 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Anybody have an asterisk or a star or an indication that that is a prophecy of the Messiah? Okay, I see several hands going up. Verse 2 says, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. You're going to count with me. What rests upon him? Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The Spirit of wisdom. wisdom. The Spirit of understanding. understanding. The Spirit of counsel. The Spirit of might. The Spirit of the knowledge of the Lord. And the Spirit of the fear of the Lord. How many do you have? Seven, the functions of God the Holy Spirit, represented in heavenly sign language as a seven-branched candlestick, which is using olive oil, symbol of the Holy Spirit, to, to move God's work forward. Yes. She's about to tell us what they're in the shape of. Six branches shall come out. Exodus 25:32 says, "And six branches shall come out of its sides, three branches of the lampstand out of one side and three branches out of the lampstand on the other side. Three bowls shall be made like all al almond blossoms on one branch with an ornament knob and a flower and three bowls 
made like almond blossoms on the other branch with an ornamental knob. Hallelujah. I couldn't remember Isaiah 11, but we remembered that they were almonds. <laughs> Praise the Lord for that. <clears throat> so, uh, let's go to our notes, bottom of page two. Our goal is to get finished with this one tonight. <clears throat> The seven lamps of fire, I'm reading from our notes, bottom of page two, those of you online watching, if you want the notes, email L info at llsda.com and say, I would like the Revelation handouts, and we'll send those to you. The seven lamps of fire are the seven-branched candlestick, a symbol of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is called seven spirits or the seven-fold spirit because the Holy Spirit has seven primary attributes. Those, watch this, those who are filled with the Spirit will have these same attributes. Let's go to verse 6 of Revelation chapter 4. I am barreling through right now. Four minutes to do the last six verses. Verse 6. I think Alan just laughed like that'll never happen. <laughs> Revelation 4 verse 6. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto what? Crystal. We will see that sea of glass later in the Revelation, and you will see the redeemed standing on that sea of glass as if it were mingled with fire. Wow. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. Incidentally, if you and I were to turn around and look backwards through that door that John is looking into, where John sees the throne like an emerald, he sees the one sitting on the throne, he sees the seven-branch candlestick. If we were to turn around and look the other way, in Solomon's temple, there would have been a massive, larger than an Olympic size swimming pool or holding as much water as an olympic size swimming pool we would have, we would have seen something that was called the sea which was the laver that was outside in the courtyard of solomon's temple massive so massive that they called it the sea well here the bible says that before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. You ever been to any of the springs around here in Florida, like at the head of the springs? How much can you see? Oh man, you can see down to where the sand is being moved by that spring coming out of the ground, right? Fun stuff. And in the middle of the throne, verse 6, and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Flashback to Ezekiel. They each one had four faces. There were eyes this way, that way, this way, and just like all of our mothers had, eyes in the back of their head. <laughs> and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Verse 7. And the first beast was like a lion, the second beast like a calf, the third beast had the face of a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts, I just feel like I'm having to skip stuff, so I'm going to stop rushing. Let's go to our top of page three on our notes, verse six. We have until the second coming of Jesus, right? Amen. I mean, we study the Bible every day. We get together on Tuesday night to study the Bible. We have until the second coming of Jesus or until we finish the book of Revelation and then go to the next book. There, there is a book after Revelation that we will be studying uh, but it, it will certainly be written prior to the Revelation. Thank you for that clarification. The four living creatures, I'm at the top of page three of your notes. The four living creatures are the covering cherubim, the highest of the angels who stand at the throne of God. You and I read Ezekiel chapter one. We could read all those others, but I would encourage you to read those on your own. Lucifer was originally a covering cherub before his fall. The Bible says that they had eyes within and without. Isn't that how it was worded? Four beasts full of eyes before and behind. 
The eyes represent spiritual vision that is provided by the Holy Spirit. How is it that you and I understand spiritual things? They're spiritually discerned. And who is it that Jesus said would come after him that would be one just like him that would guide us into truth? The Holy Spirit. So these eyes represent spiritual vision provided by the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, Saul and one of his servants, Saul's daddy, lost some donkeys. And so Saul has to go find these donkeys. And Saul and the servant that went with him are gone so long that his daddy sends out another set of servants, or at least one, to go find them. Well, Saul is intent on finding these donkeys for his dad. And so Saul says, or maybe the servant says to Saul, don't recall exactly which one that said it initially, but they said, we should go to the seer, S-E-E-R. And then it says in parenthesis, for in old time, the prophet was called a seer. And here these beasts have eyes before and behind. Symbol of, what did our notes say? The spiritual vision provided by the Holy Spirit. Next week, we are not going to do any review. We're just going to start at verse 7, and we're going to go from there. Okay, we're just going to start at verse 7. Let's pray, shall we? That's the fastest hour of my life. Uh, Chapter 5, you will have notes for chapter 5 next week. And I missed whatever caused the chuckle, but I'm sure it was chucklish. It was good. (laughs) Father in heaven, we thank you so much. Just the fact that we could gather together and open your word as a group of believers means a lot to us. We thank you, Father, for giving each one of us spiritual insight because we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And Spirit, as you dwell in us, We give you permission to clean out our lives so that we can rightly represent you to others. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Miss Jean, don't leave. I have that reference for you. This is Pastor Scott. Sorry. This is Marlene.